Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to build this awesome gaming PC for only $500. Let's get into it. So before the video begins, I wanna say thank you to today's sponsor, Good Offer 24 for making today's video possible. If you guys are looking for Windows 10 Pro activation keys, you can use this website and use the code BT18 to get 18% off your Windows 10 Pro key. To use this product, simply type in activation settings in the search bar, click on change product key, enter your new key, and then hit next and you're good to go. So first things first, we have the motherboard and for that we're using a Gigabyte B365M Micro ATX motherboard. As far as motherboards go, this is nothing too special. It just has all of these standard motherboard options. However, it does have four RAM slots, so if you do need to upgrade your RAM in the future, you can absolutely do that. However, I don't think you'll need to because this is a 16 gigabyte build. And if you need more than 16 gigabytes of RAM, you probably should focus on upgrading other parts of this PC first, but that's besides the point. So next up, we have the processor, and for that, we're using an Intel Core i3-9100F. The F just means there are no integrated graphics in the CPU, so you'll have to have a graphics card installed, which is no problem because we have one anyways. So if I had to make a guess, I would assume this processor will be the weak point of this PC build. So in the future, if you're looking to upgrade, I would certainly recommend maybe bumping this up to a Core i5 build. But I've done quite a bit of research on all the parts used in this build, and from what I could find, this is going to be a great processor for us to use with this budget. As for the RAM, we're using a 16 gigabyte 3000 megahertz kit. This kit has two sticks of 8 gigabyte RAM, so if you want to upgrade in the future, you still have two RAM slots left to upgrade if you want to. And this stuff is actually pretty cheap for a 16 gigabyte kit but it still had really great reviews on Amazon, so I'm not too worried about that. For the graphics card, we went with an 8GB RX 570. This card should be able to get you over 60 FPS average on high settings at 1080p in most games, but honestly, I wouldn't try to hope for anything more than that. I'll leave a link to a benchmark test of this graphics card in the description down below if you're interested. For storage, we're using a 512GB SSD from Gigastone. Down the line, if 512 gigs isn't enough for you, you could always just add another SSD to this build, or you could just swap this one out for a larger size if needed. To begin assembly, we want to start by pushing this little metal arm down on the processor bracket, and then you just want to push it out of the way, that way you can lift up the entire bracket. When you install the processor, you want to find the little golden triangle on the bottom of the processor, and you want to line that up with the triangle on the actual motherboard itself. That'll show you the orientation you want to install this in. Also, be careful not to touch any of the pins on the bottom of the processor or the pins on the motherboard itself because you will damage them. To install the processor, simply make sure it's in the correct orientation and set it down on the pins on the motherboard. And then you can carefully take the bracket, set it back down, and push that little metal lever down to secure it in place. You may feel a slight resistance when pushing this lever down, don't worry about it. That's just the processor pin seating into the motherboard. Next, we need to install the CPU cooler that is supplied with the processor. And as you can see, this one already has thermal paste pre-applied to it. When you're installing the cooler, you wanna make sure those arrows are pointing in a counterclockwise position. So to install the cooler, simply set the clips in their respective holes in the motherboard and then you want to apply pressure on those clips in a diagonal position. In order for the fan to actually do its job, it needs to be plugged into the CPU underscore fan pins on the motherboard. So as for the RAM, we want to start by pushing the two side clips away on the two slots we're going to use. Since we're only using two of the four RAM slots, we want to use slot number one and two, which are the two light gray slots on the motherboard. Now these RAM modules can only be installed in one orientation. If you try and do it wrong, they won't go in. So you want to find the notch in the RAM module and line that up with the notch in the slot that it'll be going into. And that's how you know which direction it will be lining up. To actually install the modules, you simply want to put the RAM into the correct slot that you want to install it in. It just simply slides into place and then you want to apply pressure to both of the sides at once. As you do this, you'll hear a slight click as the two side clips will then fold back up and lock the module in place and you're good to go. Before we continue installing all of the internal components, we want to get the case ready to accept the motherboard. To start this process, we're going to simply take off the four screws that hold on the front glass plate on the case. 
and then we'll simply lift away the glass plate that way we have access to the inside of the case. While we're at it, we can also do the same thing for the back side of the case. The only difference is the back side only has two screws on the back that hold on the other side plate. And then you can just slide that one off as well. In order to install the motherboard into the case, we first have to install the I.O. shield that's included with the motherboard. To do this, put the I.O. shield inside of the case and make sure the top is facing towards the exhaust fan. And you simply just want to push it into the little slot in the case until you hear a little popping sound which will indicate that it has been seated into its position. Installing our Corsair 450 watt power supply is really easy. You just want to slide it in through the right hand side of the case. And then on the back of the PC, you'll use four little screws to secure the power supply in place. As for right now, don't worry about the cables, we'll worry about that once the motherboard and the graphics card are installed. Next, simply set the case onto the micro ATX risers that are already pre-installed, and then you just want to attach the motherboard using the screws that are supplied with the case. Before we can install the graphics card, we need to remove these two screws right here on the back of the case, just below the exhaust fan. Doing so will allow us to remove the top metal plate, which will allow us to properly install the graphics card, and that way we can access the ports on the back. Just like the RAM, the graphics card can only be installed in one direction, and to install it, all you have to do is simply set the GPU into its socket and give it a nice firm press downward until you hear a click. After that, you can secure the graphics card to the back of the PC using one of those screws that you took out just a minute ago. I'm also going to throw in these two 120mm case fans as well. This case comes with a pre-installed exhaust fan, so there's no need to install one in the back. So after all that stuff was installed, I went ahead and hooked up a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse to the computer. And I fired it up for the first time to see if it was working, and it was. I had a USB drive with Windows 10 installation tool installed on that, so I was able to install Windows 10. All the information on how to install the drivers for stuff like the GPU and stuff like that can be found in the packaging of the product that you purchase. So there's no need for me to show you guys that. Here you guys can kind of see the final product of all the wiring inside of the case before we close it up. And the last thing we really have to do is put the glass panel back on the left hand side. This is simply the reverse process of taking it off where you just put the panel where it's supposed to be and then use the four little thumb screws to tighten it back on. All right guys, here you go. This is the final product of today's $500 budget gaming PC build. I'm by no means a professional at building PCs, Links will be in the description down below for all the products used in today's build, as well as a link to a benchmark test of this computer, so if you guys want to see what this is capable of, you can view that in the description down below. With that being said, thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys all in the next build.